Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off the late double on Breeders' Cup Saturday at Del Mar with race number 11 going a mile and a half on the turf. Let's take a look at the field, the Breeders' Cup turf. Four million dollars is the purse. Big field. Let's talk about that impressive European import, the number five, Ulysses. Fourth in this race last year as only a three-year-old. And he's done some good work in 2017, to say the least. Winner of the Group 1 Coral Eclipse, winner of the Group 1 Judmont International. His races in the Ark and King George VI were just fine, considering who he was running against, yeah. that super filly enable. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's nothing to knock about his form, obviously. They've run him in, you know, all of the big races over there. He's acquitted himself very well. Um, he's won a couple of them. He's lost a couple of them, but he's run, basically, he's just run his race every time. I do think he's a good horse. I also like his running style. He's sort of got that handy kind of running style where you can put him basically wherever you want in a race, and then he'll fire in the stretch. Um, you know, I'm not sure how short a price I would want to take on him. And there's, it feels like he'll be the one that they go for and probably be the favorite in this race. And, you know, I don't know that he has to win. I don't know that he has a huge edge on this field, uh, but he's pretty good. It's interesting to look at him, though, considering his reputation. They never really bet him over there. You know, they always find one that they like a little bit better than him over there. I really liked his performance, though, too, back in the Judmont International over a left-handed turf course, and I think that's key. Yes. As he ships to Del Mar for his second start in North America, where he was up close to the pace. I mean, he eased out in the straight, and he was better than Churchill, a pretty good horse in his own right that day. Right in there. the arc, he was no match for Enable. But you know something? Ulysses, I think he could make the argument as the horse to beat based off yeah. his form. Two and a half million dollars in earnings, and he should get some pace to run at. Some of that pace will be supplied by last year's Breeders' Cup Turf winner, Highland Reel. What a ride from Shamie Heffernan in last year's Breeders' Cup Turf. We're passing the stands the first time he just went for it. And he trusted <laughs> Highland Reel's stamina, and he had just enough to hold off the highly touted flincher in the lane. 112 buyer speed figure. Ryan Moore takes the mount this year. This source has already won a couple of Group 1s in 2017, and in his last yeah. two races, he was compromised, I believe, yeah. by less than firm ground. Yeah, I agree with that, too. I mean, the, the less than firm ground doesn't help him. He wasn't going to be Cracksman last time anyway. Well, that was a gonna huge be performance. Able. And then he wasn't going to be Enable, and that was, you know, a weird race to watch the, uh, the King George, because that was one of those races where um, they sort of took him off the pace and kept him really wide into the course on that soft ground. I really feel like they, they knew that he wasn't going to handle it that well, um, and he didn't. He didn't run his race that day, but his race prior to that, the Prince of Wales, to me, he was giant in that race. That was a really good performance. You talked about his Breeders' Cup here last year. He's got that Americanized running style that helps him. Middle half in 46 and 3 in the Breeders' Cup last year, and he kept going. He's run twice and North America, two dominant wins for this horse over here, and I think he's going to be really tough on it once again. I, I liked his performance in the Prince of Wales where he took the measure of Ulysses, just always finding a little bit more. This is a tough horse, but he might have to deal with a tough pace situation. I know he ran fast last time out, but he was uncontested on that yeah. lead. This time around, if you believe the pace projector, and of course you've got to handicap it, yep. you got the 14 Oscar performance out there outfooting Highland Reel to the lead. I'm not sure that's going to happen in yeah. here, but it could. This horse has shown some good speed in the past, but usually when he shows that speed, it's in slower paced races. Right. In the Secretariat, when he won two starts back, he sat against a weak field, yep. to be sure. Last time out in the Turf Classic, he was kind of ended up in and among horses turning into the stretch, yeah. finished evenly. I'm not going to hold that race against him, although I think the jury's still out as to whether he wants a mile and a half. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I don't want to be too hard on for the last race, but I do think you have to be concerned about the mile and a half. I guess, you know, as far as the pace is concerned, the only reason I feel like he wasn't on the lead last time is because that ridiculous long shot in that race who was, you know, claimed for like 30000 or something, just sort of ran off on the early right. lead. So they just let him go. That's fine. This will be different, and maybe they will make the lead in this race, but I still think you have to be concerned about whether he's good enough over this distance. I'm just not sure Highland Reel will be sitting third. Maybe yeah. Beach Patrol's a little bit faster. He is certainly handy in that turf classic. He sat off that ridiculous long shot. It was really a great situation for him, but once he took it over, man, he steamrolled him in the stretch. He won by five, career best buyer speed figure. Coincidence that it was his first start at a mile and a half, and it's what he He's wanted all along. We've always liked him as a hard-hitting, tough horse that'll either win a photo or lose a photo. Yeah. It was kind of shocking to see him run off and hide from that field. Really and was. if this is the new Beach Patrol, he's real tough in this yeah, race. Yeah, true enough, man. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know how he did what he did last time. I mean, he's and again, you're right. He's always been a good horse. Always been a hard-hitting horse. And even all those, you know, close finishes that he didn't win. You know, not any character flaw with him. He just happened to not get the right situation and run really well and not win. 
the way that he finished in that race at a mile and a half last time was pretty eye-catching. I wonder if he can do it again. I'm not totally convinced that he can, but I'll tell you what, if he runs that race, he's probably going to win. Going to get a big price on a recent Group 1 winner, the number four, Decorated Knight, won the Irish Champion Stakes last time out over Yielding Ground, and I do wonder if he's a little bit better when there's some cut in the ground. He beat an OK horse in Poet's Word, who came back to run second in the British Champion Stakes. Mile and a half to me is a little bit of a question. Firm ground, a bit of a question. Yeah, all those things are true. It, it just sort of feels like, too, that you know he's run against Highland Real and Ulysses over there, and they're a little bit better than he is. Um, one thing to point out about his last race, not only did he catch the ground he likes, that was a really fast pace. Eminent, the horse who wound up finishing third, went really fast. This horse and the runner-up, they both came from way out of it um, with big runs from off the pace. That race set up very well for him. Talismanic, the one is a long shot, but he is here because of the ground. He likes firm turf. He was third over soft going last time out, finishing right behind a horse that came back to run a surprising second in the arc. Yeah, he ran well in that race uh, last time, Talismanic. He came with a big run to contention. He couldn't get by to the lead, and then he got out finished at the end, but he ran well. You know, I mean, I guess his form sort of points him out as a contender in here. He's run some, some pretty decent races for a, just the best of trainers, that's for sure. I'm a little, a little turned off that his best race seems to be that mile and three quarter race. Uh, two starts back against much weaker competition. I wonder if he really classes up with the top horses here. Bullard's Alley pulled off a 42 to 1 stunner last time out in the Canadian International. In his 35th lifetime start, going into that race, he had never earned a buyer's speed figure higher than a 96. In that race, he earned a 114. He ran away and won by 11 lengths. Most people are saying it had to be the ground, yeah. and it was a ground induced fluke. Do you yeah. agree with that assessment? Yes, I do. Uh, do you think that Bullard's <laughs> Alley has found himself well, after start number 36? No, I, Best last buyer, boys, right on top. I mean, auto, you, auto, 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 that's right. I think you want to, you know. I'm a fan of this source. I just think talk, I agree, had to be the ground. I agree with that, but I mean, we talk about it a lot, you know, where, you know, people will use ground as an excuse a lot. Yeah. And this was sort of works, it works the it opposite the way. But this horse, he obviously really handled it, and a lot of other horses behind it. Cliffs of Mower is a three year old son of Galileo. Uh, this is a horse that was second in the Epsom Derby. Things have gone a little bit south for him since. Um, it's kind of amazing when you look at him early on. He started out his career like he was going to be okay. He ran the Coral Eclipse earlier this summer as a three-year-old, he was favored over Ulysses in that race. And he obviously didn't run that well that day, and he hasn't run well since. Seventh Heaven was 7-2 to two against Lady Eli in last year's Breeders' Cup Philly and Mere Turf. Did not run badly at all, finishing fourth ahead of two next out winners. She is a Group 2 winner this year. The last two races do not look good. Those are ugly running lines. But again, those courses were yeah. soft. I think she likes firm turf. Right. She's here because the mile and an eighth of the Philly and Mare turf's too sharp. That's right. And she's not an impossible long shot. She's a horse I will be using in this race. I don't care about the arc. I don't think she could really win the arc. Um, the race two back on yielding ground was a poor performance. Maybe you give her the ground excuse. It was also a mile and a quarter. That's too short for her. She's a true mile and a half horse. Her first two starts this year were great. Her Philly and Mare turf last year was actually really good. As you point out, that's a mile and a quarter. She doesn't want to go that short. Queen's Trust, you liked Queen's Trust yeah. last year because of the mile and a quarter. That was a good distance for her. It was a bad distance for this horse. She wants to go a mile and a half. She is not out of this. Fanciful Angel has come over here in North America and has run two bang-up races, yeah. both triple-digit buyers. You look at the company lines that he kept in Europe. He was a third, fourth-rate horse. He's come over here and has done some good things. Does that make you think, boy, what are the Ulysses and the Highland Reels of the world going to do uh, this field? Maybe. I mean, we've seen those horses over here already. They're better than him. This horse has run well in each of his uh, two starts over here. Maybe Lasix just really moved him up. Um, but he's run well, and he actually ran even better, I think, in the Turf Classic last time. He did not have an easy go of it in the early stages of that race. He still ran well, but I still think the horses that are coming over from Europe are better than him. Let's talk about It's in the Post and Hunt, who traded decisions in their last couple of races in Southern California. Hunt beat It's in the Post in the Del Mar Handicap. I thought the reason for that, and I like Hunt as a horse, yeah. was that Hunt just had a way better trip than uh, It's in the Post. Right. He was checked inside, leaving the back stretch, down towards the rail in the stretch, while Hunt just sat up the pace and got a major jump and I think all was right in the world in the John Henry Turf <laughs> Championship when it's in the post had a really great trip yeah. in the garden spot in the pocket you know something he had to work real hard to get up over prime attraction yeah. in that race and I thought he would have won that race a lot easier considering the trip I think he's a nice source this is tough yeah I agree with that I mean if your argument is that you like it's in the post more than hunt we're on the same page if your other argument is that they're both in a little tough here 
We're on the same page. And nothing wrong with Hunt, a horse who, when he first came over here, was considered a downhill turf specialist. That's six and a half furlongs, folks. He is now a graded stakes winner at a mile and three eighths. He just didn't fire for some reason. And I wonder if all this hard racing yeah. is starting to get to him. It's tough to take him off that last one. He didn't run his race, but Damato's done a great job with him. Sadler's Joy is a big kicker. And that fast pace, that red bar on the yeah. time form, U.S. pace projector's got to have Tommy Albertrani and Julian Leperu smiling. He won the prestigious Sword Dancer two starts back. The Turf Classic last time out kind of just fell far behind as he usually did, and he came with his usual he run. He's got one of the strongest kicks in this race, but you got to time it just right. Yeah, with him. Well, Leperu rides him perfectly. He just really has no choices but to take him back, get him going at the right time, and then let him close through the stretch, and then to see. If he's in range, he'll be heard from late in this race. I don't think he's impossible in here, especially if the pace sets up the right way. The last race, it's, I don't think it's as disappointing as it looks on paper. He had really no chance in that race. There was some cut in that ground I don't think he likes. Beach Patrol obviously really liked it. There was just no way he was getting involved in that race. This horse, he's pretty good. I'm going to use this horse. Bigger picture is such a cool horse. He was claimed for 32000 in 2015 by the fantastic Michael Maker, who's turned him into a grade one winner. It seems like he's there in each and every race. I thought in the Sword Dancer he ended up with a pretty good trip, and Sadler's Joy was just too much for him. Yep. Uh, I, I, I think that this might be a little bit tough, but you know he's going to show up. He's going to give a good account of himself in here, but he's. But it's hard. As much as we love bigger picture, it's hard to envision him winning a Breeders' Cup race. Let's take a look at our top selections for what should be a sensational Breeders' Cup turf. You like Highland Real to make it two in a row in the turf. Uh, this time from off the pace, or do you send? I don't know if they have to go right to the front with him, but I think he will be forward in this race. Um, and if he's not just out there whacking it out, he's going to be sitting right up close in here. And I'm just not so sure he's in the best horse. I'm just a huge fan of Beach Patrol. Was before his last race. Not really sure where that race came from, but he is as honest as the day is long. And if he sinks his teeth into at the quarter pole, He's going to fight you all the way down to the wire. Mike's going 3 5 13 9. I'm going 12 2 5 3 in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup turf. Race number 11 at Delmar on Saturday. Approximate post 437 Pacific. Good luck.